All right, welcome to the Code of Hammurabi fill in the blank notes. So ideally you have the notes printed out, ready to fill them in. If not, you've taken a picture of them with your phone or you've just written down all of the questions with the blanks so that you can fill them in as we go along. So the Code of Hammurabi is a set of laws. Remember that there are, there were, there are 282 total in the whole code. We are certainly not gonna learn all 282 and quite a few of them are pretty, um, harsh and violent, so we will not be focusing on the really, really awful ones. But the point that we're trying to make with this is that this becomes one of the first written laws, sets of laws that we know of, and it a large part of it affects our constitution and our laws and many documents like that for countries around the world. So you're going to be filling in the blanks as we go through. So if you look at your first blank, you will see that there is a date that they want that I want you to get. So Hammurabi was born in 1810. That's your first blank. BC as the crown prince of Babylon. He attended school known as the Tablet House. He was educated in Babylonian gods and leaders of Mesopotamia. He also learned how to fight and lead an army. So this is very different from subjects that you take. He was obviously educated knowing that he was going to become the next king. So his classes were selected and sort of customized for him accordingly so that he would have the skills that they deemed a king needed to have and not just a general education. After his father became sick and died, Hammurabi was crowned king of Babylon at the age of 18. So this is in your second where it says becoming king. This is the first line on that. So this is young by our standards. It's not all that young by BC standards, but still he's 18 and he's going to do quite a few things as a young, you know, late teenager, early 20s. He's going to do some pretty significant things for his kingdom. Despite becoming king at such a young age, Hammurabi was confident he could lead and he will prove that he can. Improvements. Over the first several years of his rule, he concentrated on improving the city of Babylon. And if it feels like I'm going fast, that's why you can pause me to get these answers. Some of the improvements he made were creating peace treaties and allies. Allies means friends with some of the most powerful nations in Mesopotamia, improved defenses and infrastructures of the cities. So defenses is obviously defending the city against invaders and infrastructure are things like roads, and access to water and those type of things which are really important for the comfort of your people. Strengthened city walls, improved the irrigation system. Remember that was a vocab word that means to bring water to your crops, so that equals food, big deal, and created temples for the gods. War. Hammurabi's peace came to an end when Elam invaded Mesopotamia. So here's the first big test of him to see if he could protect his people. Babylon was next on the list. Hammurabi turned to his ally Larsa to help fight the Elamites. Larsa never showed up. So this is going to come back to haunt Larsa because when you depend on an ally to help you and they don't show up to help you, there's a problem. Eventually, let me go back, sorry. Hammurabi prepared for battle and his army successfully defeated the Elamites. So even without Larsa's help, he has a big victory. Um, I hesitate to say victory because I feel like in a battle situation, there's no winner if people are harmed. But of course, in war, he would claim that he was the victor of that war. Babylonian Empire. Feeling betrayed in his time of need, Hammurabi invaded and took control over Larsa. So there you go. He kind of gets back at him in a pretty harsh way. Once he conquered Larsa, he continued to invade other cities as well. So once he had that taste of success, he just kept going and going and taking over and taking over more and more places. Eventually, Hammurabi controlled all of Mesopotamia and established the first Babylonian Empire. So you can see in the map over here that all the green territory is what he eventually was the ruler of. The code. So this image is actually the real code. So this was the stone that he had placed in the middle of town with the laws carved in it so that everybody could see the rules, see the consequences if you broke a rule and it was available for everybody to see. And this is a big deal because we know that people prior to Hammurabi had rules, but we don't know if they ever posted them anywhere, if they were ever documented and shared with everybody. So even though you're going to look at these codes and look at some of them and think, holy moly, that is a terribly harsh rule. And I'm so glad we don't have that kind of rule. 
the positive to the code and the reason we study it is that at least people knew the rules, right? So imagine if you came to school and you didn't know that there was a rule about tardy. You thought you could just kind of show up whenever um, and you did that and then you kept getting consequences, but you had no idea why. You had no idea why your card kept getting signed or what the rules were. That would be very difficult for you to make good choices if you didn't know what the rules were. So at least everybody in Babylonia, Babylon in Babylonian times knew the rules. So Hammurabi wanted to improve the way of life for his citizens by building and this would be infrastructure, new canals, aqueducts, and temples. Aqueducts would be essentially like big pipes that brought fresh water into town, which is obviously amazing if you can have fresh, clean water in 1800 BC. He was best known for a set of laws known as the Code of Hammurabi. There were 282 total laws written in cuneiform script and the Akkadian language, so it's written in two ways. Some of the laws had very harsh punishments. For example, if a, if a son should strike his father, that means slap or hit, his hands shall be cut off. And you might say, what kind of dad would have their son's hands cut off? And the answer is some in BC times, but I would argue that probably most parents would deal with this in some other way because parents, remember, needed their children for agriculture. So even if you just, you know, if you weren't a loving parent, even if you were a parent who really wanted to punish your child, it doesn't make sense to do that because now you've essentially lost one of your workers if you have his hands cut off. So I don't know if that was more of a scare. I think it probably was more of a scary, hey, don't do this, rather than actually that consequence actually given very often. The code is important because it contains ideas that are still used in justice systems today. For example, and this is true for our own country's laws, people need to provide evidence to prove a crime uh, or, and to defend yourself against a crime. The idea of being innocent until proven guilty and protecting the weak are all parts of our own constitution. Hammurabi dies in 1750 BC. Remember BC goes backwards, so his birth is gonna be a higher number than his death. His 43 years as a ruler, and 43 is not one of the answers on your fill in the blank, but you're gonna wanna remember that he ruled for 43 years. So please jot that down on the sides. His 43 years as a ruler were peaceful and prosperous for the people of Mesopotamia. So he gets credited with obviously creating the code, but also having a really long reign. 43 years as ruler is a long time, considering our president can only rule for a total of eight, right? Two terms, four years a term, maximum of eight. 43 is a lot of years. So he gets a lot of credit for doing good things for Mesopotamia even though some of his rules were a little bit crazy. Okay, so that's it for your notes. And if you have questions,